the architect of heartache stayed up late at his drafting table, crafting sketches of regret. It took a straight edge, it took a sledgehammer, it took a year and a half to fashion pastels out of the powder from monarch's wings. It took the death of something beautiful to create a sense of urgency, but it only takes one word to get free. So he made that word. He made love as if it were a thing. He named his buildings after lovers who couldn't love him as hard as steel girders embedded in bedrock. His phone never rang like it never rang before, wordless, as if it forgot how to listen, as if someone didn't miss him. Elizabeth was a marble monument to forgiveness. Shannon was a mansion made of matchsticks, and if you ask her, Victoria would tell you she was both a Victorian Coppola and a brick house. He soon learned people weren't as permanent as his work, and he burned more bridges than Bradbury did books. In 451, the world churned in circles and spun on its axis. Time was busy burning the years and the people away. The night shook, a boulder rolled across the sky and that's when he knew his life's work was a good lie. The kind that can withstand the fire of being retold again and again with the passion and the laughter and the chicken scratch scraps of promises lying around his drafting table. He did the best he could with what he had and that's all any of us can ask. And I'll bet a monarch's wing, the architect of heartache could step in a puddle, look at the city's reflection, swish, swash in the water behind him, between the skyscrapers, rubbing themselves together. I'll bet he could find us, all of us, all of us dumb luck lovers, all of us love struck wonders, all of us second and third chancers, some of us begging and some of us granting forgiveness.